there's no game, there's no end. Yeah, yeah. And inevitably, what I always find is that that relationship fires yeah. right then and there, yeah. and they don't care, they'll buy what you're mm. selling. Like, you don't yeah. even need to ask. Woo! Alicia Morelli is a copywriter, best-selling author, and online marketing consultant who writes copy that makes you cash. She's the go-to copywriter for some of the industry's best-known product and service personality brands. Through her 15-plus years experience in relationship selling and online marketing, as well as having been Kate Northrup's company president for three years, Alicia writes what sells because she knows what sells and has a track record of blowing by sales goals to prove it. Licia mixes an uncanny ability to predict the future with hard data to help her clients succeed in the marketplace. You can learn more about her at liciamoreliwriter.com and I'll put that link in the show notes. Hi, Licia. Hi, son. Good I'm morning. So Good morning, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for coming on. I was so happy to uh, happy you said yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me. It's such a delight to be here. And I mean, I'm so thrilled out of my mind that you asked me. So yay. Yeah. And I'm I'm so I'm so excited about this because it's not uh often I talk to people kind of like behind the scenes of personal brands. And you have experienced both, I think both behind the scene and in, uh, in front of this in the scene. And we, I think we've worked with even some of, um, the, like you work with Clep and Reed and John Holland, who we've worked with too. So I think we've been in a similar journey probably. <laughs> but do you want to kind of start and tell us your journey, like your, your story of how you got to where you are now? Yeah, yeah. And to, I love that. I love the the smallness of the internet. As soon as you've been around, I feel like any industry for a number of years, all of the roads lead to Rome in that way. Like it all overlaps. And then everyone's like, oh, yeah, I know this person. It's like, okay, this is not that big. This place is not that big. If you, <laughs> stick, ar if you stick around long enough, you'll meet everyone. <laughs> <laughs> all 8 billion people. All of them. All of them. Um, yeah. So I got my start in online marketing. Um, it's actually a funny story. I used to write jokes on Twitter and so I was part of like back in 2008 before Twitter was like really taking off. I was part of this sort of underground joke writing, you know, community on Twitter. And back then, like if you had 600 followers on Twitter, you were making it like you, you had made it. It was amazing. You were so popular. Right. And so there was like, a group of us that would write these jokes and I would spend all day thinking of jokes, you know, writing, you know, essentially copy for my account all day. And my mom used to say like, Oh, Alicia, if only you could make money online, it would be so amazing. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. You know, I had no idea. <laughs> so that's where I got my start. And actually as a writer, I was chosen to be a part of a book called Twitter Wit. So I knew at that point, maybe I was on to something like maybe, maybe there was something to be had from this, this online, you know, copywriting I was doing. So that's really where I got my start. And then I started my own business and was like trying to navigate the internet in, in front of the camera, if you will. Um, mm. And was like, this is hard. Like what? I didn't even know who to follow. Like I had, I was directionless, son, directionless. Mm. So, but I like made a go of it. And I was, the first time I made a sale online, I was like, oh my God, this is <laughs> like magic, you know? <laughs> and so then I found B school and that's really when, you know, I, when I took Marie Forleo's B school, that's when the rubber hit the road. I was like, Oh, I can start to put all these pieces together. And so How that was back in, was that? that was in oh. 2014. Oh, so, okay. yeah. So I, I started to really kind of be like, okay, if I can, these directions, I'm really good at following directions, son. So I was like, I'm going to follow these directions. And I started growing my own business. Right at the time that my business really started to take off, though, I was diagnosed with cancer. So I had um, stage three melanoma 
So I had three surgeries I needed to have and chemo and like the whole thing. And I realized after that, that, you know, maybe what I was doing wasn't really what I needed to be doing, that maybe I should be focusing on the writing. So I always go back to the writing. And um, what happened was, is I, I closed my business. It was a great run. I felt sad for about five minutes. And then I was like, great, I will do something else. <laughs> so I started to work and write copy for online businesses. And that's when, you know, around that time, I started writing copy for Colette Baron Reed. And, you know, I was writing for startup product companies that had, you know, that were getting great funding and things like that. And I just started to realize like, and then in tandem, I was taking the copy cure and other copywriting classes because I was like, oh, this is a whole thing, you know, again, following directions. <laughs> so that's really how I got my start in, in being a copywriter. I was always a writer. Um, you know, I have two children's books and I have, you know, essays. I've been in Vanity Fair, but like copywriting was always the thing that was so fun because it felt collaborative. And so what happened was, is that I was hired to write copy for Kate Northbrook. Well, long story short, I'm writing the copy. And then she's like, actually, I, I think there's something more here because of the strategy I would give. So that would set me apart in copywriting is that like, not only was I writing the copy, but I was also giving strategy. And so I started working for her more. And then she, you know, promoted me to run the company. And that was a really exciting time. And I learned so much again, about the behind the scenes of brands, what all goes into it. You know, I wasn't just the copywriter at that point. I was like doing everything and making sure all the parts and pieces were going. And then, um, and then that, that time came to an end and I still copyright for Kate, but like, I realized that I just really love writing. So <laughs> I was like, I'm really, I'm really going to focus on the copywriting and supporting my clients and, and being that role for them rather than managing companies and, mm -hmm. and doing all of that. So that's like, that's the arc of how I got here today. And, you know, finally embraced like publicly, <laughs> you know, <laughs> So you, when you were um, working with Kate Northrop, you were also running like the business side too. Like that's right. Not just yeah. copywriting. And did you, is that something you had experience in or you just learned it as you, go yeah so i did have management experience business management experience so my career way back you know in my 20s way back um that was in nonprofit management so i had i was running a section of a nonprofit and i had like 50 employees and it was it was like definitely a leadership position and so i had had that experience and then I was always, and then I was in management prior to that in college, I was in retail management. So I had this, you know, management experience and I would always be put in these managerial roles. <laughs> I came to realize like, I, while I can do it, I really like supporting in other ways. And so what happened was, is it was so great. We helped, you know, we built origin during the time I was there you know, their company really grew. Kate had a baby. She wrote a book. Like there was like a lot going on. And so I was overseeing the team and the day-to-day -day operations. And, you know, I was that integrator role that the internet has um, created, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's, so, a, it's literally, literally the most important role though. Like, it really is. Yeah, it's it's the one that like, I feel like a lot of people have tough time finding the right person. Yes. to do that role. Yes. Yeah. Because you have to have the right personality fit too. And I think that's where, you know, internet companies and online marketing companies are going to start growing is like, as they make more money, it's going to become more of a team effort. So how are you hiring and, and you know, and mm -hmm. what are you paying attention to? Um, and so the integrator role makes, you know, that's like the person running the ball, the quarterback sends it, right? The leader sends it, and then you're yeah. running it. And do you think it helps that because you're also um, you're an intuitive, right? So you, <laughs> is that yeah. something that you were you already kind of aware of that world with like Colette Baron Reed and these, this kind of spiritual um, influencers, I guess out there? even before you did, did B school or is that something that you found out later on? Yeah. So I knew, um, 
I knew about Colette and John and, and all of these folks because I was I living in Boulder. I had, you know, I, I live in Maine now, but at the time I lived in Boulder and, you know, we've got the metaphysical shops and then like the tarot reader on Pearl Street. So like, nice. I was always interested in that. And so I was always trying to find folks, you know, that resonated. And so I did know about the whole Hay House you know, Hay House Radio, okay. Sylvia Brown, you know, like all these people. Because yeah. I watched a lot of Phil Donovan. So you understood <laughs> that content. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so how much, like, how important do you think that is that you actually understand um, whoever the personal brand that you're working with, whether they're a spiritual leader or yoga teacher or, or business uh, coach, like how important is that to understand that, er, that world? Yeah, that uh, you know, that's a really good question, son. Because I kind of flip flop back and forth. I might mm -hmm. dissent from popular opinion on this, but <laughs> I think like I think it's easier to learn sort of the values, the voice, and the the you know gospel, if you will, mm -hmm. of the personality brand if you know about what they're teaching. However, I am a firm believer that if you're a person that can run a company, you can learn really quickly the content, the brand, the voice, the personality, right? And so I think it's more important to have somebody who, I almost would say, don't have somebody who believes in your stuff mm -hmm. because they're gonna always, <laughs> this might get me in trouble, but you're going to always have a no person on your team. You're always going to have somebody who's saying to you, mm -hmm. let's think this through. Like I get that people are like gaga over this topic, but you know, as a person who, you know, like is a skeptic of this, this is what I'm asking. This like, you're going to have a different lens. And I firmly believe you need a, you don't, you don't just want all yes men's around. No. Yeah. yeah. No, you get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, like you need somebody to play the devil's advocate just to balance yes. things out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You I need totally that person. That. Yeah. What about in copywriting? Same thing. Yeah. I remain the no person, son. I guess it's, <laughs> I, I guess it's my plot in life. Like, yeah. I feel like if you're a copywriter who understands business strategy, then you're gonna be a no person for the person mm -hmm. you're writing for. Um, because you're gonna see things, they're so in it. You know, I if I work too long in any one space in copywriting, I have to take a break because I get too myopic about the content and then I don't see, I forget, you know, what to start with. You know, it's almost like it's like suddenly I'm like, the world knows what I'm talking about. I don't need to think about yeah. the basics, you know. Yeah. So for me, what I, I think is a good copywriter should be a no person. They should be a yes person too. Like when you give them feedback, they should be like, yes, that is great feedback. Yeah. But if it's if it's strategy and if it's, you know. They have to be able to see from the outsider point of view. Yes. Yeah. 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 What you're saying actually is like, I struggle a lot with when I work with um, like clients in kind of the spiritual space. Yeah. <laughs> because... Um, how do you find that balance between like speaking their voice, their like talking to their audience, but also at the same time, understanding like this is what's required to sell, right? Or right. convert. Right. Um, Cause a lot of, a lot of my clients are, are want to write things in a very like lack of better words, woo woo way. Right. Where to, to me, it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> like it doesn't like, it's not very straightforward. Like, I don't know what you're selling, like things like right. that. Right. So how do you find the balance there? I mean, I think that, I think what happens for me um, that's helpful is that I've run enough launches and I've run enough data numbers and I can, because because I can be like, well, I'm a Libra, so I need to be very balanced on this. It's got to be like woo woo and data driven. Like it's got to be in the middle. Yeah. So like I just try to meet people where they are when I'm explaining the necessary actions. And and here's what you know, not everybody's going to take the advice. And then I, as a copywriter, and this is advice I would give to copywriters, is that 
we can only do so much. If a, if a client doesn't want to follow, you know, the strategy, that's great. Just make sure that you affirm with them, like in an email, like we talked about this, we're doing this. I just want to make sure that that's okay. Because a lot of money is invested in copy. And as copywriters, we have to be very clear in our communication. And I think what happens is that I, I can give examples of success and show people through my experience, like, here's what's worked in the past. Oh, also, this didn't work. And here's why. So maybe we can meet in the middle somewhere. And I think that's helpful for people. But if you're a copywriter just starting out and you're, you're trying to convey you know, strategy to somebody because you know it works, I would just have data. You know, I would just bring data to the table and say, okay, I know we're talking about the ethereal realms right now, or like the crown chakra is, uh-huh. is widening, right? But we got a root chakra into yeah. the data. <laughs> you know, like, just try to use, I mean, we're copywriters for a reason. We can use the language of our clients. So yeah. I always just am like, find something they can identify with and mm. then sell it, you know, because we're constantly selling our services too. So I think that's, that's awesome. Important. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not... Yes, we write, like, I feel like a lot of us creatives, what we do is we do, we write copy that sells. Right. We don't try to sell that to the client, which we just tell them about it and then we expect them to get it. <laughs> right. But you actually do have to sell the idea to them and, yeah. and make them understand it. Yeah. Yeah. I that's think that's, point. that's really something I, you know, as I have a background in relationship sales. So I'm constantly trying to create positive relationships with with no expectation in return. Like I want to have a relationship, right? Um, And when I have a relationship, that trust comes automatically. So somebody's also going to listen if you're saying like, I dissent, you know, like, or (laughs) here's why. Um, And then always like, you know, copywriting, people have a hard time seeing the value Occasionally, I think if you've been in the business a long time, you know the value. If it works, you make money. It's like a Mm -mm -mm. cyclical wheel. Yeah. But I think sometimes we have to sell our ideas around strategy. There are different personalities, of course, as you know, some with copywriters. Some copywriters just get their ticket, they write their thing, they hand it back in. And I think that's great. Um, And then some of us are more collaborative, like we're thinking about things, we're up at night confused as to why an email didn't open or something like that. So I think it's just like both work, just the client has to figure out what kind they want. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of clients want, I mean, a lot of clients who doesn't have a lot of experience working with copywriters, I think they assume that like, they're going to do all the work and then Mm -hmm. I'm just going to, and then, but it, that actually in my experience doesn't always work out too well for the branding, like maybe in sales, writing sales letters and things like that, maybe it will. Yeah. But I just, I so believe like that the client's voice has to be there. Right. Yeah. And sometimes that doesn't work if somebody else is writing the whole thing, like from beginning to end. Yeah. Right. And there's this aspect too, where I will tell my clients, I'll say, I will get this to 90%. I do not want to get it to 100% because I need you to go back in and change words, change sentences. Like you need, even though like I've been in it and shaping it, um, your your final seal of approval has to go in there because otherwise I will have said something that you would mm. never say and you'll be annoyed about that later. Like, mm. why did I post that? You know, That's like so, a perfect balance because yeah. then you understand the structure, you know, you know what needs to be said before what, but then they can still tweak the words here and there. Yeah. If a client goes in and they have to do more than just like tweaking a couple, you know, some sentences or a word, then I know I need to go back in to fix it. Cause the, mm-hmm. cause people are busy, right? They've hired a copywriter. You know, the people that hire me, they're busy. Like they, they don't have time to write the copy. They've got other yeah, stuff yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I just, and I feel like busy. a lot of them don't know how to start from scratch. Like once you get it to a 90%, then they can take that and do something. Yeah. But they yeah. don't know where to begin. <laughs> well, that and like, think about anything. Like when you're trying, even like for writers, you think about the blank page and you just want to uh, die. <laughs> <it's> so intimidating. <laughs> like, I don't know what to say. 
<laughs> you know, like I am going to go have some snacks now, you know, like I'm always getting up because I'm like, Oh, I don't know. Like, where do I start? There was, so do you have some yeah. process you follow? Like in terms of that, like, how do you start a project or so, is there some sort of ritual that you have? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I light some candles. No, I, I do. I actually light some candles. Um, but when I do a coffee day with a client, I really, what I love to do is have a, a meeting with them or um, I have one client, I love it. She sends me Loom videos, right? And mm -hmm. so I take notes from the Loom videos and then I have all these questions that I ask so that I'm hearing more about what their product or service is. And it's such an important part of the process. And I think a lot of people don't realize how important that meeting is. You know, it feels like, oh, it's an hour and I'm gonna be talking about this. Like, what is the import? And, and what I have found is that it starts me so much quicker, you know, like on a sales page, I'm like, all right, here's the headline. Cause somewhere deep, integrated in this interview I did and this note I took, they said the headline, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that people, you know, that's one thing is I either have that meeting before the copy time that I'm writing, or I have it first thing in that morning. And that's, that's huge. Cause then I don't feel like I'm starting with a blank page. I feel like I'm starting with somebody telling me where to start. And, and then I can really embody their voice because I've just listened to them for yeah. an hour. And sometimes it's easier for an outsider to see that, whereas in that person might not see it, just like explaining it. Right. But then for an outsider to get a fresh perspective, like, oh, that, here's the main message or, right. you know. Right. Do you follow some sort of a, because there's like a lot of like sales page best practices and like their story brand and like all of these structures that people have. Yeah. Do you follow any of those or do you just, every project, it's just different structure? Um, I think what I have really begun to love to do is, um, is really try to figure out like, what type of sales page is going to serve the product, right? This is a tactic um, that like, I think early on, I didn't know we could do. But like, there's so many different sales pages out yeah. there, you know, and oftentimes I'll follow like Laura Belgray has her Gusta method and I love that. And, and so as long as I'm like getting those components, but then, you know, trying to think of like the type of sales page or how it should look to serve the product most, I think is something that's like new to me. And it's something I'm really excited about because over the course of the last couple of years, I started to think like, oh, okay, so this is the product. What, what would be the best type of sales page for this? Um, whereas before I would just sort of intuitively know kind of the structure in my head. Um, and then I would kind of go from there. But now I try to figure out like two or three different types and, and then it. what's the best fit. Got it. Um, so you've worked with some big names. Um, what is it like? And you've also you also have your own personal brand. So, what is it like building a personal brand? Like working on a personal brand, like behind for someone else versus yeah. doing it for yourself. Um, so I think that behind the scenes of somebody else, it's well, number one. They they usually have a lot going on because of the fact that they could hire somebody, you know, mm -hmm. to be running things. So like that's exciting because you see how all of the pieces put together then make the machine go, right? And I don't mean machine like it's like heartless or anything. I just mean like a business is yeah. a fine-tuned yeah. machine. Like there's it's a, a well lot of people, machine. it's well-oiled, <laughs> right? Like there's a lot going on. Um, so please, please listeners, don't mistake that I'm talking about business as <laughs> heartless machines. Um, just to be clear. So what, what I noticed is, is that it, and, and I talk about this a lot in copy too, of like you peel back a layer of the onion and then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, there's so many layers to this onion, mm -hmm. you know? And I found so much value in process. I found so much value in making sure the right people were doing the right jobs because what happens then is that the, if you're a personality product even, or your personality brand, like, you feel supported, 
you feel like there's people behind you that are like, we are with you on this. Um, and so you have, you know, your processes for posting on social media and, you know, what day is the copy due? What day are the graphics due? When does it get posted? Like it becomes a rhythm. So you know what to expect. And again, I think something that is really fascinating is that you learn, you know, okay, how do you connect the script to the sales video, to the email that's going out, to the social post? And like three months from now, we're going to be talking about this. So how are we going to start to see that today? You know, and I think there's just so many elements that people, people don't really know happen. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it looks, you know, the internet will have us believe. It, it seems seamless. It feels seamless from yeah. the end user's perspective. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, honestly, no matter how well you've planned a launch, launching is bananas, son. Yeah. You know this. Like, it's always yeah. like, ah, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> something. And happens. I feel like the more complex it is behind the scenes, right. the more seamless it feels yes. to the audience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The best compliment we can ever get is, oh my gosh, your launch seemed like it was so easy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was it. That was it wasn't. <laughs> you know, but I think that's, you know, that was one thing, um, you know, that was, that was really important to me too, was just finding out like, how can we, because there's so much going on behind this personality brand, behind this brand itself, like how can we make it so, so that it, it, it feels more easeful. Like, mm -hmm. how can we, how can we create an environment where it feels less stressful? You know, how are we going to organize things? Um, and I found that with, you know, every brand that I've helped with strategy, it's like, oh, okay, I can see where you can fine tune this and I can see where we can do more of this. And then it's suddenly like all the dominoes get lined up and then it's like, okay, now we can, now we can go. Got it. Is it like when you... When you write for yourself, is it harder to write for yourself than for a client? Yeah. So in that same way, like just the other day, I was like, I wonder if I can hire a copywriter. <laughs> 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 They'd probably say this better than I am. <laughs> yeah. No, I think from my brand perspective is that, um, you know, I always laugh because I'm a, you know, I'm a singular person. I have my designer and she's amazing she's over at South of Belmar. Like, and I have her and then, you know, me. And because I'm not yet ready to, you know, make any other hires, I feel like, and I have my editor too. So like, I have my two people that help me make the things go. Um, but what I would say is that what happens is I'll be writing my copy and then thank God for Liza, my editor, because she'll read it and she'll be like, so what you selling here? Like, you know? <laughs> she's very nice about it. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I totally forgot a call of action. Like, I, so I think it is hard because I'm also doing the administrative stuff. I'm getting mm -hmm. clients, their proposals, like I'm doing other things. And so when I finally can sit down and write something, I really have to tap in. Another thing that happens, I think is that I have to have myself, I have to give myself enough space where I haven't like written for a client because inevitably I'll start mm. writing and I'll be like, nope, nope, this sounds <laughs> like the person I was writing for uh, yesterday, you know? So I have to like dial it back and, and get clear. But yeah, I think, I think that's what's interesting. I also like to tell people that I'm focusing on, you know, just a few things right now. Like I mm. can't, that's my capacity. I know it's my capacity. It's very nuts and bolts type of stuff, but it makes it easier to keep writing about it because mm -hmm. I'm focused on it. Got it. For me, like, I know when I write or I design or do anything for myself versus client, one of the main things I always tell clients is like simplifying it and just, like you said, finding that one, one thing that we're selling or sticking to it, right? And there's a lot of like editing out it's hard for hard to do that with my because I'm so such an overthinker. Mm -hmm. So I feel like when I'm when I work with the client, I'm a little bit more detached from the project, so I can give good advice like that. But then when, when then I'm it's almost like me trying to coach myself, right? That doesn't right. work. Right. Like, do you ever experience that? Yes. Oh my god, the overthinking. 
Like, I'll be honest, I'll probably hang up from this call, son, and be like, oh God, should I have said that differently? Like, <laughs> what did I do? What did I do wrong? You know what I mean? Like, I'll have a minute where I'm like, ah, and then I'll get over it. But I definitely, I am the same way. You know, I, I think it's hard to edit ourselves because we're so close to it. And then um, we can overthink like, well, if I take this word out, how does that change this? Mm -hmm. Or like, if I use this picture, how does that, how's that going to land? You know, or, you know, and I think we, it creates this cyclical wheel of like, you know, am I doing all the things that I need to be doing? Am I doing them correctly? Right. And then with clients, it's like, that detachment happens, you know, you're, you have a second person, I think, and I think too, you might find this with your work. Um, and in that sometimes people just want that second person, you know, and I think that's the thing is like when you're working yeah. with another person, it's like yeah. bouncing ideas, it's back and forth when yeah. it's just yourself. It's like, your mind is like, shouldn't have put that <laughs> in that email. Is that kind <laughs> of what, <laughs> that's kind of what your editor does for you, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So my editor, Liza, she will, she'll be like, okay, so I've cut this sentence down to the quick, essentially. Like she'll take it, it'll be like this long rambling paragraph of the sentence and she'll get it down to like, like five words. And I'll be like, great, that's so much better. Um, <laughs> but then I can see it again. And I think that's really important too, is that when it's collaborative, you're able to see where you're like, oh, I can go back in now and then I can edit too. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, and I can deepen into something else that maybe is more important. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I think feedback is so important when you're working on your own stuff. Because it's, it, they see the things that you, you just kind of gloss over or something like that, or you're just too close to it so you can't see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I feel like the feedback, I mean, I have to like ready myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so <laughs> it's very vulnerable, right? Cause so what I usually do is when I, when I write or I design and I send it for feedback, I almost have to like take off that creative hat and turn on like a business hat mm -hmm. and just even imagine that that's not my work, that we're talking about someone else's work right there. <laughs> 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 right and I like and I have like you know I've had editors from the whole gambit book editors magazine editors like uh MFA teachers like I have had like all kinds of feedback and I and I feel like I'm a type of person that at this point in my career I don't take it personally but I, I know I have to be in the right headspace I'm like okay mm -hmm. ready for feedback but if I'm in the middle of writing something and then I see a comment come in that's going to be <laughs> like, I can't look at it then like I don't I don't want to know yeah. like I, I when I'm ready because you still have it. your creative head on at that point <laughs> <laughs> right and then I'll start overthinking mm -hmm. the comment you know so then it's a spiral you know <laughs> what are some of the things that you do like how do how do how can people I have a lot of listeners that are overthinkers yeah. uh, and it's, it's well, a big topic yeah. <laughs> it's actually like tied to perfectionism right because a lot of people mm, can't post on social media or like can't can't start working on their something whatever that yeah. project is because they yeah. need it to be perfect and they're just overthinking it so what are some things that do you think people can do that can help them overcome overthinking? <laughs> yeah. So I always joke because my, my growing up, my mother used to say life by the inch is surely a cinch life by the yard is very hard. And we would always be like, ah, <laughs> Every time say it, like, ah, you know, but nowadays I'm like, oh, that's gold. I think, <laughs> what happens is, is we can get so overwhelmed by what's in front of us that taking bite-sized pieces, regardless of what you're about to endeavor, is the only way through. You can have the big picture. That's great. You have the umbrella. Stop looking at the umbrella. Now, today, you're going to write your email or tomorrow, you're going to do a social media post and then do what you say you're going to do. Because I think that's the other thing, son, is that the more practice that you get doing things 
doing the things that you're afraid of, but also that you've said that you're going to do, that's going to help you get past your overthinking because you're going to get feedback and you're going to learn and then you're going to get more feedback and you're going to cry into your pillow and then you're going to learn and then you're going to be fine. That's true. You know, but you get used to it. I think that, you know, I look at myself as a writer from where I was even, you know, early on in my career, 15 years ago to where I am now. And I'm like, oh, thank God for the feedback and the overthinking and then the leap from the overthinking. Cause now I can, I can just jump. Mm-hmm. I'll, ha- you know, I, I like to plan for the jumps now before I never did. Like I would just leave. <laughs> like, oh, um, but now I'm like, let me do a little research. Is this even mm-hmm. interesting to people? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's that building that foundation to then leap off of. I think that also helps with overthinking because you feel secure in your facts, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I know what to do because I have facts that support it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And uh, sometimes like those actions, like when you actually take, take that bite-sized action, while you're doing that, my overthinking goes away. Because mm-hmm. like, like, I'm really bad at meditating. Because like when I meditate, I start overthinking like all this stuff. But then when I do yoga, and that's why I like I use kind of yoga as meditation. Because once I start doing yoga, now I forget to think. <laughs> right. Because yeah. you're thinking about how all your muscles hurt from all that stress. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I mean, I think that's the thing is like, you're taking it, you're putting it in, you're embodying the thinking, right? And then you become present with the experience. Yeah, exactly. And writing is also the same thing. Like, I feel like I overthink the most when I'm staring at a blank page. Mm-hmm. But once I just start writing, whatever, whether it's good or not, <laughs> that kind of go away. Now, now all my thought is like working on that. Yes. So I, I actually stop. Yeah. Yeah. And then if we think about writing as like an, ex, you know, also an embodiment of experience, we're kinesthetically taking, you know, thoughts in our head and putting them onto a keyboard or onto a piece of paper. And we're moving that through us, right? Where wow. I get a little bananas on things is like, I forget, like I'll be thinking a lot and my mind will be kind of like going and, you know, And instead of just like journaling for five minutes, I just let my mind stew. But if I wrote (laughs) it down, it would be out of me, you know, and it would be separate then. And I could be like, oh, you know, this is interesting. I can see where I'm overthinking. (laughs) (laughs) So I want to actually talk to you about, uh, so yeah, let's talk about personal brands. Um, Because you work with a lot of personal brands. I work with a lot of personal brands. What are you, what do you think is, are some key um, elements to like personal brands? Cause you've worked with some big names. Yeah. So what did you find like they all have in common that makes them successful? I think the biggest thing, and this is something that I, I feel is so important anyway, just in anything is that the communities really felt held right? They felt held and seen. They were, they were part of something, you know, with, with that is something like, I feel incredibly lucky to have worked with people who are just kind humans who really do want to hold people and be like, I want to do this, you know? And I think we can, um, we can see success when people feel held because, you know, this is something that I've been kind of nerding out on a lot lately. Um, You know, and I know you and I always laugh of like, it's the boring things that make (laughs) the success, but it is like something I've been really nerding out on is how does a customer experience result in a, in a sale? And Mm -hmm. like 64% of people say they will buy something if they feel like they were like seen and served and Mm -hmm. held, you know, versus price like they won't care about Mm. price if they have a good experience and then something like seven out of ten people um they they will read a testimonial and if it mentions service they Mm. will say so something that i think personal brands 
really need to get on board with, especially in their copy and showing this is the ability for the customer to feel held and respected mm -hmm. and taken care of. Because it's one thing to sell something and then just not take care of your audience, mm -hmm. but it's entirely another feeling for them if throughout the whole process they feel cared for. And, and I think that's such a selling point for personal brands that that is just starting to maybe, um, <laughs> maybe because I'm forcing people to, but like it's just starting to kind of emerge where it's like, okay, we've got to pay attention to this because yeah. it actually does make a huge difference. Yeah. So do you mean like, um, so I know for, from my experience, the biggest difference for a sales page to convert is the testimonials. Yeah. Like it's literally like sometimes it can have nothing, but it has good testimonials that'll sell itself. Yes. <laughs> Whereas yeah. in, it can be the perfect sales page without, without the testimonial, it just doesn't sell. Yeah. So is that what you mean by like making them feel seen, held? Yeah. Uh, so, so the result, so to this example, this is great. Mm -hmm. So like, a lot of people have testimonials, but what will happen is it won't show how the person actually does care for it. You know, I've worked with people who they, they DM their customers answers, right? They might have a, during a launch, they might have a hundred questions. They'll just DM away. Like they want, because they're a human and they know that person is a human. And, and so they really want that. Well, then guess what? If you're asking for the right testimonials, you'll see that, they will have a couple of components. Not only will they have the component of, I had success, here was my return on my investment, you know, I made $8,000 this month, mm -hmm. whatever. You'll, you'll also see the customer service side in that testimonial. And I think what happens is, so you get the return on the investment and then the second half of the testimonial is like, the team was amazing, I felt so taken care of, I felt supported. Mm -hmm. Mm. that's like right there. You might yeah. as well just hand over your $5,000. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I love that. When I see that, like, Oh, the team was so supportive. Like so on like, and sometimes they name names that like so-and-so like, yes. you know, got on the phone with me or so-and-so messaged me or something yes. like that. Yeah. It makes me feel safe. Right. It makes me feel like if I buy this thing, I'm not just going to be abandoned. Like <laughs> Exactly. They're going to show up for me. And I yeah. think that is for me, what I have seen, which is also what got me really interested in this is, okay, so how as a brand, are you creating community and how, even if it's a product, you know, I think about, you know, thinks underwear, like they've created a whole community of movement. Like women are like, and the people that use them, like, it's like, great, this is amazing. I feel seen and taken care of. Like they understand me and their customer service is amazing. And so that just propels action for people because we live in such a noisy industry where 10 people might be offering the same type of thing. So the customer is becoming very discerning. And a lot more customers are reading reviews and a lot more customers are reading those testimonials. And, and honestly, <laughs> like for a long time, I never read one single review. I never read one testimonial. I would always be like, do I like what it is? I mean, whatever personality that is, I don't know. But like, I was like always shocked when people would be like, yes, I, I read all the, all of them. And I was like, yeah, yeah. why? And they're like, because I want to know how I'm going to be treated. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is interesting. So I think that's huge for a personality brand. Yeah. I noticed the same because I'm like you too. I, if I trust somebody, like I love Murray Folio, so I'll buy it. Anything. But so many people like base their decisions. And I, I was so shocked when I started working on sales pages, how big of a difference testimonials make. Yeah. But you were saying that that all starts from customer service. Like, yeah. And it all starts well in customer service. I think people think customer service and they think like a phone bank of people answering the phone <laughs> and emails, like, call centers. I, it's like, yeah, like they think the call center, like the automation, you know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I mean, that is what I'm talking about. Cause if you do have a, a service center, mm -hmm. then you need to train people, but like customer service starts with the person in charge. That's mm -hmm. where it starts, right? It starts 
a team is going to watch how that person interacts mm. with other people. And then that is going to inform how they interact yeah. with other yeah. people. And I think oftentimes we think about this service as like bottom up, like this customer service team sees a sees a trend and then they report it and then they get the directive and it goes back yeah, down. Yeah. It's like a process. <laughs> process, right? But this this stuff this being held, this, this creating relationships, this is a long-term investment mm -hmm. with the people that are buying from you. Mm -hmm. And I look at it like every salesperson should be a customer service person. Mm -hmm. And every customer service person should be a salesperson. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they go hand in hand because the, these, you're, the, you're the person that that customer is interacting with. And if they have a good experience, they'll stay. But that kind of, that attitude that that's something that you're saying is led by example like whoever is the actual person the way yeah. they treat talk to customer audience the way they do it everybody working for them is going to watch that and learn it's it's kind of like parenting right like when <laughs> like children are not gonna listen to what you say they're gonna look, see what you do right and right. i'm starting to actually really like now that you're saying that it makes perfect sense because I'm for me, this is all new, right? I've our clients, they they have their customer service team, they do right. all of that. But when I look at um the way they do it, is it's very personal, right? And mm -hmm. like for me, what I just started this new journey on personal branding like six or seven months ago. And I'm seeing that like a lot of people always ask me something like, how did you grow so fast on Instagram? And I honestly think that a lot of it has to do with me spending time on DMs, mm -hmm. like the stuff that you don't see. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I feel the same way. Like I, my friend was telling me about Tony Robbins um, digital program. Yeah. And she was saying how like their, their, their whole funnel and process is so amazing. So I was like, I just went on it and I just opted in, right? Like literally, mm -hmm. I think like 10 minutes later, I got a DM from one of them. Oh man. And then I got and then I got a phone call from them. And it, it was just like, but every it wasn't like they were trying to sell me. Right. It was like, hey, like I saw that you um you opted in here. Like, you know, like what 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 is it about it that it interests you? And they're just like talking to me like as a person, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that was that was really wild me, actually. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I really want to go now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really going to try to go. Yeah. I mean, you really yeah. get, I mean, that's the thing. I learned this, um, you know, from Gina Gomez. She's, she's this incredible. Um, she taught me, she's like, maybe you should, cause she always knew I was a salesperson. She knew I was a writer. You know, one day she finally said to me, she's like, well, maybe just like reach out to people with no end in mind. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, right. Duh. Like it, it was like, sh like that piece of advice was like gold because yeah. it just shifted everything. I mean, this was years ago though, but like it shifted everything. And I was like, just reach out with no end in mind. And that, you know, and that's what like, I'm creating this, <laughs> this DM and bomb bomb script, because what I'm noticing is that DMs, like you're saying, son, are such like great behind the scenes ways to create these relationships I mean, there's nothing more exciting than seeing a DM from somebody you admire come in yeah. and be like, you're like, oh, you know, this yeah, yeah, is great, yeah, yeah. right? Like it's your heart skips to be, it creates an emotional feeling. Yeah. And so what I realized then is I, um, Laura Belgray is amazing at this. When I joined Shrimp Club, you know, we got a personal bomb bomb message from her. And oh, I was like, the video, right? she yeah. sent the video <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I made the best decision of my yeah. life. You know? <laughs> but what I noticed in all of these examples was that they were personalized with no end in mind, which is why I wanted to like create this mm. sort of template. Cause I want to show people like you're reaching out to reach out. Maybe you look in their feed and you see a photo and in that DM you write like, Hey, I really love the photo of you at the beach. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for summer, you know, or whatever it is. And then you're connecting, but there's no, there's no game. There's no end. Yeah, yeah. And inevitably what I always find is that naturally speaking, that relationship fires yeah. right then and there yeah. and they don't care. They'll buy what mm -hmm. you're selling. Like you don't yeah. need to ask. 
yeah. <laughs> it actually doesn't take from that one first come like that's what i realized like just me dming people that are i really respect and saying hey like thank you so much for this message or whatever like i really that really made my day or something like that like to to actually going to the ask mm -hmm. whether hey can you be on my podcast or okay it actually doesn't take that many steps because no. in that first in that first message you you they can clearly see you're not coming to them with an agenda. Right. You know? Right. And yeah. we all are, you know, no matter who we are in our lives, people want something from us. You know, it could mm -hmm. be our kids. Mm -hmm. Like this morning, my daughter was screaming at me halfway across the mm -hmm. house because she needed help with something. And I was like, oh my God. You know, <laughs> but like we all have demands that are being put upon us. And when you come at a conversation where you're not asking for something yeah. right away, when yeah. you're just having a conversation. It eases it's me. So, yeah, <laughs> it's so refreshing. It's like, oh my God, somebody who doesn't mean something. This yeah. is great, yeah. you know? And then and I, I am, feel it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm 100% more willing to give you what you mm -hmm. want because mm -hmm. you didn't mm -hmm. ask for something right away. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, if, and now I, even I see, like I get so many DMs and like, as soon as I even open the message, just based on, I can just feel the energy from that message. Like, oh, like, how should I respond to this? Like, I want to be rude. <laughs> Versus like somebody who's just like, I can see that there's no agenda there at all. Yeah. And then I usually reply right away. Yeah. Because, yeah. because it's, you know what I mean? Like, there's no pressure at all. You know? Yeah, it's true. Like, you can, you can smell it. You can yeah, smell yeah. the, <laughs> smell <it>. <laughs> <laughs> like, I go to my DMs and I'm like, mm. <laughs> What's happening? You know, um, but I think then, you know, I've created amazing relationships just like in the same way that you were talking about emailing and just saying like, hey, this was a great yeah. message. Thank you. That's how I connected with Laura, actually, because I've been I took copy cure like five years ago and I've always looked up to her. Yeah. But then and then I just sent her a DM and, you know, a few messages later, I just asked her to be on IG live and she said yes and you know <laughs> I was yeah. like wow yeah it doesn't take yeah. much I think it's yeah. just people get you know they get in a kerfluffle because they're nervous selling is hard it takes a lot if you <laughs> if you start with the ask or if you try right. if you start with an agenda right but like you right. said yeah. right and no I think like that. I love that that's the thing about the internet is that everybody's coming at it with different backgrounds and there's just like small, small things that we can do and everything is written. So there's no tonal quality, you know? So it's like, it's all these things that we can do just to help people feel at ease. And, and the words we use have impact and the way we ask or the way we connect has impact. And I think, you know, for better or for worse, everybody's a writer now. So <laughs> not, not all of them are good writers, but I, I think it's 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 no better time to be a good right to learn how to write well because there's yeah. so much things being done over text, DMs, emails, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it's really an age of written communication that you know we haven't seen. I was laughing last night. I was on the phone with my friend and I said, Oh, the people of this house don't understand that you know, people who grew up in the eighties and the nineties talk on the phone still, like there's still <laughs> conversations that happen. She's like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I think like we're now in this age where written communication is, is very yeah. much the most important. So it is, mm -hmm. it is a good time to learn. Yeah. So before we wrap up, um, yeah. So what do you, what do you have in the plans? Like what are, what's something exciting in your, like what, what excites you right now? Yeah. So right now I'm super excited because I'm working. Well, number one, everybody can get a testimonial template for free. Um, over I'll at put least the link in the yeah. So uh, everybody grab your testimonial template. Cause I have just seen time and again, when I give clients this testimonial, just the, the testimonials that they get back are phenomenal. Plus they feel super great about themselves. Cause they were like, they love and it's uh, yeah. like totally, you know, it just helps. So I'm super excited about that because I think it's something that people need and yeah. don't necessarily know how to get. Um, but I'm really excited. I'm working on um, a course right now that I'll be launching this winter. And it's about um, customer relationships, how to build relationships, and then how to get the magical testimonials from those relationships. So it really is 
you know, it's a course about learning all of what we were talking about today so that you can hold your community so that you can get testimonials so that you can sell more. So it's good. It's good. And when is that coming up? Um, January. So it'll be January. launching in January. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, definitely guys grab I'll put the her website on the show notes grab the te- what is it? Is it a testimonial guide? It's called Yeah, it's a testimonial template. So they'll get some information template. and they'll get the yeah. template. Yeah, because I think that's so important because I, I also always have that problem where whenever I ask for a temp- testimonial, I get kind of like, uh, like <laughs> And, and I understand how important, like when testimonials like structured well, where I've seen like some, some websites with just such a testimonial that just makes you want to click buy like right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I think uh, this is so important. And you've obviously collected a lot of good testimonials, you know, over the years. Yeah. You're probably yeah. using these same tactics, right? <laughs> yeah. And I will say like, um, I, I, because I'm a person that had to learn the hard way of like how to ask for a good testimonial, I, I thought like, well, there is a process and, and it, it's yeah. one of those things that, you know, maybe people might be like, well, this, is this very exciting? Yeah. Is it very flashy? No, but it's huge for copywriting. So I think yeah. like if you're investing in copy, invest in the time it takes to, to get these testimonials, number one, because it's going to make your copywriter's life so much easier Mm -hmm. because they're going to immediately see why people love you. Mm -hmm. And it's going to get people to just like want more of that. They're going to want more of your personality and to be around you. And, you know, I think Roald Dahl said something like, be around people who are like sunshine and it's that sort of what this does I think and I probably messed up that whole quote just <laughs> see overthinking it's happening it's happening live, it's happening live. we got it on tape <laughs> oh, yeah. well yeah that definitely grabbed that um I want to thank you so much um uh, for coming on the show Thank you. Thank you, son. It's such a pleasure to be I here. I love it's... reading about your, I know you, you also have uh, on your Instagram, <clears throat> which I'll put in the link in the bottom too. You, you write about like the moon phase and stuff like that, which I find yeah. super interesting. Thank you. Yeah. I like to bring it all together. It's just like yeah. all the things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. I love everything you're doing and I love that you're supporting the overthinkers of the world. Cause I think <laughs> that's all of us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the support. <laughs> <laughs>